There is a set of common misconceptions that many people have when it comes to Islam and Muslims. The first one is the concept of jihad. The literal translation of the word jihad is struggle. This may or may not be correct, I'm not sure, but that jihad is like a holy war. I don't know oh, if that's yeah, correct. I think you're right. The word jihad is mistranslated as holy war. The Arabic equivalent of holy war is harb al muqaddasa This term is not found in any verse of the Quran. There is nothing in the Islamic sources that permits a Muslim to fight against the non-Muslim, solely on the basis that they are not Muslim. In fact, the contrary is true. Allah says in the Quran, no compulsion in religion, which means no one can ever force anyone to become Muslim. At the individual level, Jihad primarily refers to the inner struggle of being a person of virtue and submission to God in all aspects of life. At the collective level, Jihad can take on three forms. The first form is the intellectual Jihad, which comprises of the struggle to convey the message of God to mankind and to combat social evils through knowledge, wisdom, and dignified discourse. As the glorious Quran says in chapter 41, verse 33, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ The second form of collective jihad is the economic jihad, which comprises of economic measures and spending from one's means to improve the living conditions of the less fortunate, the poor, and the downtrodden. The last form of collective jihad is the physical jihad, which involves collective armed self-defense, as well as retribution against tyranny, exploitation, oppression, or freeing one's land from an invader. Thus, the concept of jihad is vast and comprehensive. Admittedly, it is the last category, the physical jihad, that is a cause for concern to many, and which we shall explore in detail. Jihad on the battlefield in the Islamic perspective is the last resort and is subject to stringent conditions. It can be waged only in self-defense or to defend the faith itself. The glorious Quran says in chapter 22 verses 39 and 40, أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى نَصْرِهِمْ لَقَدِيرٌ الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍّ إِلَّا إِلَّا أَنْ يَقُولُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهِ وَلَوْلَا دَفْعُ اللَّهِ النَّاسَ بَعْضَهُمْ بِبَعْضٍ لَهُدِّمَتْ لَهُدِّمَتْ صَوَامِعُ وَبِيَعٌ وَصَلَوَاتٌ وَمَسَاجِدُ يُذْكَرُ فِيهَا اسْمُ اللَّهِ كَثِيرًا وَلَيَنْصُرَنَّ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَنْصُرُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَقَوِيٌّ عَزِيزٌ Thus, the conditions of physical jihad are clearly defined in the Qur'an. When you read the Qur'an correctly, then it's mostly referring to more the internal war we each have within ourselves of becoming holier beings, becoming better people, essentially. You know, jihad is a very, very broad and very comprehensive uh, term. You know, it means, to, it, means to, it means to struggle, okay? And so fighting, you know, physically fighting like in wars, you know, Fighting is just a part of jihad, just a small part of jihad. You know, uh, there, there, there are other aspects of jihad. So it's a whole, it's a whole comprehensive uh, 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 idea itself. Okay. Uh, uh, Sometimes people equate, you know, jihad with, you know, just war or just violence. You see, uh, in, indiscriminate. No, no. Let me put it this way: when people equate jihad with terrorism, <laughs> really, okay? That's the crux of the matter. That's what the media does, all right? But jihad, really, jihad, let me see, the best way to put jihad, jihad is noble. Jihad is ibadah. The word ibadah means worship. It is, a, it is an act of worship that God Almighty has ordained, all right, in order to promote. 
and spread Islam, all right? Uh, in the early period of Islam, the Prophet Muhammad did jihad by spreading the message of Islam, by inviting mankind to follow the guidance of God. <laughs> That's jihad. Uh, uh, you know, God says, and, 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 sh and, and strive, you know, uh, 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 a mighty striving with the Quran. See, that was jihad, to spread the message of God, you know, by propagating Islam, spreading Islam. And, uh, and as a result of doing that uh, for a number of years, you know, then people began to attack the Muslims and attack the Prophet. So they had to defend themselves. You know, Allah revealed verses where they can stand up and defend themselves physically, you see. Uh, so jihad is allowed, you know, when people uh, 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 try to suppress and stop the message from reaching humanity, you know, then men, Muslims are told to get up and defend. Islam and to, to spread the message, you see what I'm saying? And to establish truth and justice, you know? So it has nothing to do with terrorism because even when we have to fight to defend our faith, okay? You know, there, there's rules of engagement, you know, when the prophet fought war. We have this example, and the prophet fought war. He fought the, 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 uh, the physical jihad, all right? And he always cautioned and advised, you know, his, his followers, you know, not to uh, harm the women and the children and, and the old people, uh, 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 or non-combatant. So he's very, very strict and very, very clear on this issue. So what you see today is a lot of propaganda. If we were to go to the wall and cut the lights out in this room, we would inhabit a state of darkness. And if we go back to the wall and flip the switch, we would have a state of illumination or light. The question is, did we create darkness and light, or is one the absence of the other? Evil, in the absence of good, dominates. And good, when it is radiant, alive, in the hearts of creation, repels evil. So the format of jihad is in that principle there by itself. To establish the good, in order to repel the evil. If man did not struggle, and the word that is utilized in Arabic is jihad, if he did not struggle with himself, make jihad within his own heart, then the natural forces of evil would prevail, as we see today. And so when man struggles within himself, and he seeks to repel the evil that rises around him, he provides not only a benefit for himself, his family and his community, but for the entire humanity. Had we repelled the evil of the human instinct over and over again in the course of international warfare, humanity would not have suffered. That was a jihad. And we do not call those who perform that as a jihad to repel evil terrorists but we tried to appreciate whatever good they were attempting to perform. Sometimes our attempts do not reach the merits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we go astray. So the jihad must be performed, because if we do not repel the evil, it will overcome. But it is what you mean by jihad. When you take a commandment of Allah to struggle against evil, and you convert it by a term to make it repellent to the human family, then how do you treat the fact that we are experiencing a great, we're experiencing a greater range of evil in our lifetime today probably than we have ever seen because we have weapons of mass destruction in the hands of the wrong people can create havoc. And I do not know of a Muslim country or person who has ever dropped nuclear or atomic weaponry on any family, country, or people.